All right, y'all, what is up and welcome back. It is currently 5.29 in the morning. I've got the truck loaded up and I'm heading down to the beach to do it my first little wade fishing session in the surf of the year. So I'm pretty excited. The water was looking super good yesterday, super blue. And hopefully it is still like that this morning. I think the wind switched around to Northeast sometime in the night. I'm hoping it hasn't muddied up, but we'll see what happens. Either way, it's gonna be a good morning out in the surf. Whether we catch anything or not, just happy to be going down there and getting on the beach. So y'all stay tuned, stick with me. I'm gonna head down there, got a little bit of a drive. And yeah, fingers crossed, we're we'll getting into this fish. So let's get after it. All right, y'all, we're pulling down 61st Street in Dallas and about to go up Heartbreak Hill right here, see what the surf looks like. And ooh, fingers crossed, it's gonna be good. Oh, and it's good. Pretty nice and calm right there, and the water looks good. You really can't tell until that sun comes out, but it looks all right. Let's get down here on the beach and start fishing. Well, we made it down to the beach, and y'all check out how nice it looks. Sun coming up, about to come over the horizon. Absolutely beautiful morning. It is a little bit rough, so we're gonna have to push out past that first bar to get over those breakers. They're, the waves are not small this morning, so we're gonna get pretty wet, but it's definitely manageable. That water is brown up until that first gut, and then it turns a beautiful looking trout green. So we'll put the phone in the car, put the GoPro on the head mount. And let's get out there and catch some fish. You gonna get a little soaking wet here? That's all right, we brought a towel. That's part of it. A few waders down there, one dude over here. Today we got the SLX paired up with the Waterloo HP Lite. First time throwing this together. And we are throwing a 1 4 ounce jig head to start with a down south lure. I also brought a spoon if I want to change over to that. Tell you guys what one thing i always see people doing is whenever they're surf fishing and then they complain about surf fishing is standing right in where the waves are breaking like if i was to move 10 yards forward that is the worst place to stand you really just got to wait for a set to roll through and then push out as quick as you can this looks like our chance Oh, and we're gonna get wet. Gotta jump. And go again as soon as that wave breaks. This one's gonna suck. All right, we're wet, we're soaked, but we're past it. Oh, I got a fish. Or something, or seaweed. No, I got seaweed, that ain't no fish. Oh no, it is a fish. Y'all, we got ourselves a sand trout. We're no whiting. Huh. Awesome. It's not what we're after, but hey, that's cool. Get the release. Boom. It looks like we made it past the waves. The main thing we're trying to catch here, guys, is some speckled trout. That's really what you're going for in the surf. Redfish too, but usually just ends up being speckled trout. Another rogue wave.
We're really gonna put that XLX to test today. See how it stands up to the salt water because it is wet, unfortunately. Hard away in the surf though. Pelicans swooping on in. All right guys, so whenever I was walking out here, I got bit twice. Now that I've been out here casting ahead of me, I haven't gotten bit, but I just casted to the side out here and got a bite. So let's see if we can catch one over here. Maybe they're out where I am. Maybe I'm too far out, but this is where you gotta stand because of the waves. Otherwise, you'll just be in the worst area ever. Getting absolutely smashed by the waves. And that takes all the fun out of it. It's part of it, but it takes all the fun out of it. Alright y'all, I'm hooked up. So this whole time I've been out, this feels like a real good trout here. This whole time I've been out there fishing, super far out. I don't know what this is, it's a trout, it's big. But now I finally moved back to like less than waist deep, almost to my knee. And I hooked up, because I thought in my Oh my gosh, I lost it. Y'all, that was a good fish and I lost it. Oh no. Popped off right there. I had my drag loose and everything. I don't know what happened. Oh well, all we can do is keep casting. And excuse the water on the camera. I have nowhere dry on my body to wipe this camera, so. Anyways, whenever I walked out this morning for the very first time, I hooked a fish. There's another one. Let's go. Okay, I'm onto something here. I hooked a fish shallow, and then I walked past them because I thought that maybe I needed to get out deeper. But it turns out, nope, they're right here. Big old surf trout. I don't have a net today. I forgot I left my net in the truck. It's okay, this guy's hooked deep. So we're going no net. Dude, if this is how big this one is, that means the last one must have been huge. Boom. Nice keeper trout right there. It's a solid 17, maybe an 18. Throw him on the stringer and I can't believe that, guys. One of the rare occasions where it pays to be shallow in the surf. First fish of the day. That's crazy. That means that last one had to have been massive. It's all right. Good old surf trout. But you know what? I should just listen to my gut. Whenever you're out there weight fishing, cast as you walk to your spot. Don't just, oh, my lure's tangled. Don't just head straight out. And that's because you never know where those fish are, how deep they are. Well, today I just decided to head straight out, completely skip over this first little gut where these waves are breaking right here, even though that's where I got my best bite of the day. And look at that, came back to it and uh, it paid off. Now I've switched over from a 1 4 to a 1 8, just to kind of slow my presentation down a little bit. So it's not just straight on the bottom. There we go. So right here you can see, when there's no waves coming, we're just above our knees. I'm out behind where they break, but I don't have to worry about getting waves crashed on me. There's another one. Oh, he's off, he's off. That was a good bite. Guys, I'm getting bit, not but 20 feet in front of me. Right there, and there's a little white water. And I should be throwing a top water right now, trying for some blow ups. The surf is where I have my best luck with top water. Right as it hit, there's a fish. Oh, he's off. It's crazy. It's casting pretty much sideways. All right, so I've been watching these people down to the right and they are out where I was earlier, out past this sandbar, fishing that deeper gut. And I haven't seen them catch anything. And then there's a guy out to my left fishing. He's been fishing shallow all morning. I thought maybe he just didn't want to battle the waves, but no, it's because he's catching fish. I just saw him pulling a nice trout. All right, 
we got another one here. Feels like another good one. Super heavy, staying down. Fighting them in this way. It's actually been about 20 something minutes since I caught that last fish, maybe 15. But it is a good fish. Man, he is just holding down. Wish I had a net. That's a good trout. Oh yeah, it's a good trout right there. We're finding them in the current of the waves coming back and forth. So that also makes them feel pretty big. But that is a good one. Play them out, let them get tired, and then we'll try to scoop them up. Man, it kind of sucks not having a net. Boom, big guy. Got him. Beautiful fish. Let's put them on the stringer, get them on hook. Ate it right in the corner of the mouth, which means they're biting good. Okay, he's officially cotton on the stringer. Hook out. And we slide him down, get him away from us. Very important to have a long string in the surf. You don't know why. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ow. See if we can get some more. All right, we're gonna switch colors here because I don't feel like getting in my bag right now with all these waves. So on this plum, if we can get some on there. All right, we're hooked up again. This is not a big one. Oh, and we're gonna get broken on. It doesn't fit. Well, he's staying down now. I think it's just a little trout, though. Yeah, it's just a little trout. Oh, yeah, he's off. Perfect. Oh, get away. Oh, oh man, they were blown up right there. I got him. That's a good one. That's a good one. Hope there's not too much water on the camera, guys. I'm trying to keep it dry, but it's impossible. Uh, he ain't that big, I don't think. It's honestly impossible. No, I mean, it's heavy fish. There's so much bait out there. You see the bait when they come up. Oh, that's the trout. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're definitely moving out from where they were 30 minutes ago. If I lose this one, I'm not too upset. I'd like to put him on the stringer, but he ain't giant. Once again, I found myself in the worst spot to stand. We're gonna try to push out of it real quick. Well, there's no way. Just walk our fish with us. There we go. 16 inch trout. Perfect, put him on the stringer with the other two. I haven't been keeping as much fish lately. I've been keeping just a few whenever I go because I've just been uh oh and everything's soaked all right but yeah like I was saying I have not been keeping as many fish whenever I go lately just a couple uh just for the catch and cooks or a quick little dinner but if I can catch a limit today I'm gonna keep it because I like to go make a whole bunch of blackened fish tacos or a few different types of fish tacos and show y'all guys some of my favorite. So, two more to the limit and we're done. There's a, oh, he pulled off right there, y'all. Fish pulled off right there, not too far off. Let's see if we can get something else in that same spot. He was 10 yards out in front of me. Sometimes it's hard to feel the fish with the wave. That's a big old wave. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right, so it is 8 o'clock, and I just came in right now just to take a little reset, a little five-minute break or something. I just got absolutely bulldozed by, like, two big giant waves back-to-back. -back. 
breaking over my head. So it's not fun, got everything soaking wet. But so far, here's what we have. Three, nice keeper trout, all about 16, 17 inches there. So I'm gonna dry off real quick, dry the camera off as much as I can, although it's just gonna get soaking wet again. Y'all stay tuned, let's go out here and see if we can catch some more in the spoon. Okay, so that wind is picking up. It's actually switching around to the east right now, which isn't gonna help us too much. Oh, there's fish chasing right there. Let's see if we can catch one of those. chasing in the wave. It was crazy. But yeah, so the wind has switched around to the east right now and it's picking up throughout the morning. Now hopefully I'll be done here in the next hour or so, but the water's still looking nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start shallower because there's a man over here to my left. Like I said earlier, that's been fishing way shallower than what I see everyone else doing and he's been catching them. So, oh, there's one on the spoon. Shallow. Oh, I just, no. No, he's spinning. Y'all guys, I'm knee deep right now. I just hooked that fish way closer in than where I've even been standing. Throw it back out. It's the problem with these heavy spoons. They can cast a mile and they're great, great action, but fish can throw them really easily. Let's see if we can get another one right here in this shallow water. Real quick, I'll tell you how I'm working this spoon. There's a few different ways to work it. The two ways I like to do it, pretty much the two typical ways. One way, obviously, cast it out, and then just start reeling back. Vary up the speed depending on what they want to eat. Just gotta try it until you find it. But that's one good way to work it. That's what you do a lot of times for Spanish mackerel and stuff like that, burn it back. But then my favorite way to work the spoon, especially if I'm fishing off the jetty or something for trout, Oh, I think I just saw a fish out there in that wave too. Let's cast that let it sink, and then just lift it up, and let it sink back down. Lift it up, let it sink back down. And you see that, and a lot of time they'll hit it on the fall. We're gonna try both, see what they want this morning. See if we can hook into some. It's cool because you, if you look closely, every once in a while you can see a trout in the top of these waves. y'all so that wind is picking up and it's really pumping from the southeast here coming from that way more east but uh the fishing has seemed to slow down quite a bit it has been about 35 minutes probably since i've gotten a bite so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna take a few more casts out here <clears throat> and then i'm gonna head in shallow and i'm gonna fish shallow for a minute just to see if there's anything there and just to kind of dry off but if not, we got three fish on the stringer, and that's a catch and cook coming at us. Y'all stay tuned. Let's see if we can catch a couple more fish. Uh, but if not, I'll see y'all back at the house. A whole bunch of birds working out this way. I think I just got bit right here, though. Right in this white water again. playing my drag real loose. Trout have pretty thin mouth. Let's just get a good look at him, see how big he is. Oh, it's a big one, guys. Big old fat trout. Loosen the drag a little bit more. Just play him out. Hooked right in the corner of the mouth.
All right, guys, so I'm back at the truck now. I am done for the morning, and I ended up with these three nice keeper trout right here. So I think the last thing I saw on the GoPro was me trying to grab that trout and then it got off, which is no big deal. Would have been nice to have it on the stringer to take it home, but I wasn't too worried. Then after that, like usual, y'all know how it is. GoPros are like the most finicky things in the world. They always seem to have a problem, but when they work, they're great. When they don't work, it's like the worst thing ever. So what I ended up doing after that was I just ended up staying in this first gut where I got that bite, just right over my knees, casting out towards the first bar, which is just amazing that it's almost 10 in the morning and the fish are still there. But I ended up staying in that first gut and I just waded down the beach about a hundred yards, just slowly walking and casting, you know, just as if we were wave fishing. Most people just stand in the surf and cast straight out. But instead of doing that, I wanted to try to find the fish today because they seem to be scattered. So I just walked down and I ended up getting on a pretty good bite. I didn't end up with my limit. I could not manage to land any of them. One thing I learned from today, and one thing I'm definitely taking out of this fishing trip is I will never go wade fishing without a net again. I thought it was a good idea because I wasn't gonna be lugging around a bunch of stuff and having to worry about the net flying off. But if I had my net, we would have had our limit about two hours ago. So I don't know. Either way, it was still a great day. I'm really happy with what I got. We're gonna head home now. I'm gonna clean these fish up for you guys. And then we're gonna do a little catch and cook on. Like I said, we're gonna be making a few different types of tacos. So stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how to make some really delicious food here. Let's get in the car and head back home. Right, so we're back in the kitchen now. We have our three nice speckled trout, six beautiful flames right there, as you can see. And initially I told you guys I was gonna be making three different types of tacos, which is still true. But instead of doing like fried, blackened and grilled, we're just gonna go ahead and throw blackened seasoning on all these black them up in the pan, and then just do three different types of toppings. So still gonna be three different tacos, but just a lot easier. So we're gonna do this cooking part a little bit different. I'm not gonna go over everything super into detail. We're just gonna roll a nice little montage of clips. I hope you enjoy it. Let's try something new here and see how it works. So we have everything ready to assemble the taco. All the fish is cooked up, as you can see right there. It looks super good. And I'm just gonna go over what we have for the three different tacos. So of course we have tortillas, that's for everything. And then for one taco, what we're gonna do is some shredded cabbage and avocado, and that's gonna go on one of them. And then we have some hot pico with pineapple, which I think is gonna be super good. And then just your normal mango pico, just really mild. We have some limes to put on top, and then this right here is a little bit of cilantro avocado dressing or sauce. So squirt down top, this is gonna be super good. Let's get to assembling these. So the first step of putting together our fish tacos is of course getting the fish right. So we're gonna cut it up. One filet will usually make about two tacos. As you know, these tortillas are not too big. Let's give this blackened fish right here a taste. 
Get us a little piece right there. Super white, super flaky, little taste. Yeah, that's gonna be great. All right, so let's just take our fish and basically we're just gonna start laying it in the taco. So a few pieces in each one. Just like that. Okay. And this is when I need a taco stand, guys. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this one. This is going to be our cabbage and avocado. So we're gonna take a little bit of shredded cabbage here, put it over the top, like that. And I'm not a big avocado person, but for the video, we will put a couple pieces. Boom, boom, and boom. Okay. The next one we're gonna do is going to be the hot pineapple pico going in. A little bit on top here. And that pineapple, that pineapple is really gonna help to even it out because this is pretty spicy. So put some of that in there, put a lime for that one. And then the last one, one of my favorites, just the most simple, black and fish with a mango pico. Super easy. And then we have the salsa. So we can put this on all of it or just put it on one of them. I'm gonna start right here. So one last look at the tacos right there. They look super good. I'm not gonna try these for y'all because I mean, y'all seen make fish tacos before. We already know they're gonna be good. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, thank you so much. Until next time, peace.